Well, that's fun to keep the streak going. I mean, most importantly, I got a chance to win the US Open now. It's hard when you're not in the field to do that, but um, I worked pretty hard to squeak in. It was touch and go. I wasn't able to play well enough the last few weeks on tour to guarantee a spot through the world rankings, and then obviously coming up just a little bit short in the qualifier. So it's been quite a journey to get into this one, but I'm really happy to be here. Uh, you arrived here on Saturday uh, before you even knew that you were officially in the field. So what has the wait been like and how have you been spending that time since you have arrived? Yeah, after leaving the qualifying side, I was really uh, down, I, you know, disappointed not to lock up a spot and um, unsure of really what would happen. But as the week progressed and I learned a little more about how the field will be filled today on Monday, once the world rankings are done and, and the alternates can fill in. I was a lot more confident, so I, I did come up here early and get a couple practice rounds in, which was great, and have a what I think is hopefully going to be good preparation for this tournament. How would you describe 2014 Adam Scott Golf versus 2024 Adam Scott Golf? Now that guy was good. <laughs> he was really good, but uh, there's still some good stuff in me. You know, I'm fit and healthy, and that's great. Um, and you know. It, it only takes one or two things, and last week I had a couple good practice sessions and I felt like I saw some shots that um, were really high quality and, and make me think I can still mix it out here. So with all this experience, you know, if I can play some good golf, hopefully that will help me. All right, and joining me now is senior writer for GolfChannel.com, Rex Hoggard, who's also coincidentally celebrating his 56th birthday today. So happy birthday, Rex. I know that you had a, a chance to catch up with Adam earlier this week. What did you learn? It was kind of two-part when you look at this. First, it was the emotions of not having qualified. Keep in mind, he bogeyed the 36th hole at that qualifier. So he was a little heartbroken not to be able to get it done in the playoff. And then the other part of it is how he sort of came to the conclusion. So that was Monday, and then by Friday, he'd come to the realization that he was actually going to get in the field and that he actually had to learn the machinations of how this field is created. It's not like a normal PGA Tour event. You don't have a straight alternate list. It kind of depends on, as he pointed out, world ranking. He got to that point, 61st in the world. But it also depends on who withdraws and where you were an alternate. So that part was kind of interesting to me. And the other part is watching him play the last few weeks. He was exhausted. He had played five in a row before the Memorial Tournament, took last week off, really worked on his game. When I talked to him today, there's a level of confidence that I haven't seen in a while, and he is excited about playing this golf course. Yeah, certainly very excited. Got to speak with him earlier myself as well, and that seemed to be the sentiment that I got from Adam Scott. And, uh, of course, Rex, i got to say that you're celebrating your 25th anniversary of covering your very first major championship. Yeah. So lots of things to celebrate for Rex Hoggard. Uh, 1999 U.S. Open was the first time you ever covered a major right here at Pinehurst. This was the best, and we were seeing a lot of Payne Stewart things. I mean, it's one of the majors that stands out in my career. But it came up the other day, and I was trying to explain to my son why it was so good. And I had to tell him that Phil Mickelson was waiting for the birth of his first child, and he had a pager. And I just got a blank look from him, like, what is a pager? So that took about 10 minutes for me to explain. <laughs> it gives you an idea how long I've been doing it.